When you think of Best Buy, you might think of the bright yellow tag on a popping blue, or the gray interiors lined with all kinds of computers and gadgets for geeks. You might think it's a boring place to be, or a boring company. However, Best Buy has managed to mount one of the greatest turnarounds in retail history, and you might just want to rethink your assumptions about this tech retail giant. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Dollars and Cents, helping you make sense of making dollars. Best Buy wasn't always Best Buy, though. Founded in St. Paul, Minnesota, Best Buy started as the Sound of Music Store in 1966, specializing in, you guessed it, stereos and other electronics. Richard Scholz owned and operated the Sound of Music Store, and by 1969, he acquired multiple rival companies, expanded the business, and even went public with the Sound of Music. However, years later, a tornado destroyed the largest and most profitable of the nine Sound of Music stores in 1981, resulting in excess or damaged stock shoals couldn't sell in store. To remedy that, he decided to have a tornado sale, promising the best buys in the parking lot. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? During those four days, Sound of Music made more money in that sale than in a typical operating month. Just two years later in 1983, the company name would change from The Sound of Music to Best Buy Incorporated. From then on, Best Buy would dominate the market, only rivaled by Circuit City. It rapidly expanded, tapping into foreign markets, establishing stores in Mexico, Canada, and eventually worldwide. Best Buy also bought large stakes in international companies including Five Star, Best Buy's Chinese arm, as well as UK-based Carphone Warehouse, along with many more. On the home front though, Best Buy opened hundreds of stores across the US and made major improvements to those stores themselves over the years including a merger with a bunch of geeks, in fact, a squad of geeks, who call themselves the Geek Squad. Trained computer technicians, the Geek Squad had already been a staple in the electronics field, specializing in the service and repair of computers and other electronics. This acquisition fits in perfectly with the electronics retail giant and made Best Buy stores both the destination to purchase and repair electronics. Interesting lesser known fact, Best Buy owns a record label. Formed in 2000, Best Buy created Red Lion Entertainment, a music label headquartered in Nashville, Tennessee, focusing on the next generation of musicians. While there may be no accounting for something like taste, Redline is still in operation today and is still owned by Best Buy. Despite all of its growth, expansion, and profit, a different kind of tornado hit Best Buy in 2009, the rise of e-commerce. 2009 saw companies like Amazon start to take over the market, and Best Buy's rival, Circuit City, couldn't compete, shuttering its doors for the last time that year. From then on, it seemed like Best Buy was also doomed to follow in its rival's footsteps, slowly losing both its revenue and market share. Just like it survived the tornado of 19 1981, Best Buy survived beyond 2009. In fact, the company made a comeback with Renew Blue, a plan formed by new upper management that's shifting the company's focus and breathing new life into the tried and true tech retailer. While Best Buy's financials may not look like they were in the fast growing 2009, it's time to look at how they are today. The very first thing to look at is, of course, revenue. This should give us a good idea of whether or not the Renew Blue plan is actually working. In 2016, Best Buy brought in $39.53 billion, and in 2021, that number climbed to 47.27 billion, an impressive growth rate over the last five years, all things considering. However, this is a decline from 2010, where Best Buy brought in $49 billion in revenue. I'll explain this decrease later on, though. Moving on, we'll look at shares outstanding. When I initially saw this number, I was absolutely blown away. In 2016, Best Buy had 346.5 million shares outstanding. Today, in 2021, it has just 259.6 million shares outstanding, an incredible 20% drop in just five years. This means that shareholders are having their stake in the business dramatically increase over time, which is always great to see. Now let's look at Best Buy's free cash flow growth over the last five years. Free cash flow is one of my favorite parts of any company's financial because it's just as simple as cash in, cash out. It presents a very clear picture of any company. Best Buy has done a solid job in this area too, bringing its free cash flow from $1.18 billion in 2016 to $3.51 billion in 2021. The fact that Best Buy's free cash flow is growing faster than its revenue is interesting. It means that Best Buy is either getting its costs down or has expanding margins. Both great things to have. Current assets versus current liabilities is our next topic. Best Buy passes handily with $11.27 billion in current assets versus $9.64 billion in liabilities, and they also have a solid $4.34 billion in cash. More assets than liabilities means in a jam, Best Buy can pay down its outstanding debts easily, giving the company more stability. This next part takes the last five years of free cash flow and multiplies it by 20 to get an expected market cap. Best Buy's average over the last five years is $2.13 billion in free cash 
cash flow. If we multiply this number by 20, we get an expected market cap of $42.6 billion. Currently, Best Buy's market cap is $28.05 billion, which means that Best Buy is deeply undervalued, at least according to these metrics. But this can be a little deceptive. For just a second, I want to present the data from another angle. Last year was an exceptional year as online sales and in-store pickup exploded for Best Buy. In fact, 2020 saw an explosion for plenty of companies. This is what Best Buy's revenue looks like. Notice that little $7 billion jump last year? Well, I do. Just to be thorough, I want to present another case for valuation. If we strike out the last year as a fluke, our valuation changes just a little bit. With this little adjustment, we get an average free cash flow of $1.6 billion and an expected market cap of just over $32 billion. Without last year included, Best Buy seems to be selling very close to fair value. It's important to keep this in mind when deciding on the company because I hope this jump in revenue can continue, but honestly, I'm pretty skeptical. Of course, the last two things we have to look at are return on invested capital and the dividends Best Buy pays. ROIC is easy with an impressive 16.7% and last year an astounding 25.7%. This return on invested capital puts Best Buy up with some of the best companies in the world like Apple, PayPal, and Visa. On the dividend side, Best Buy sports a 2.5% dividend yield, equating to $0.70 cents per quarter or $2.80 yearly per share. Best Buy's free cash flow easily covers the dividends with a 33% payout ratio and this dividend has been growing for 7 years. Overall, Best Buy has a strong balance sheet. However, my main investing thesis lies in the so far successful turnaround plan Renew Blue as well as the subsequent Rebuild the Blue and how it's led to massive changes in the company. After years of struggle, Best Buy needed a change, a change of CEOs. Brian Dunn was replaced as CEO by former Carlson CEO Hubert Jolly who brought with them Sharon McCollum of Williams-Sonoma as CFO. This change proved to be incredibly beneficial as they introduced the new Renew the Blue plan in 2012. This plan addressed major points such as cost reduction, heavier focus on both online sales and the company's North American stores, and the redirection of the actual store experience. Cost reduction led the Blue Giant to be able to cut billions in costs over the last couple years, but the heavy focus on online sales has been tremendously successful too. This 2018 chart shows the sheer growth of these sales, but it was 2020 that really highlighted how great the growth actually was. Quarter 2 of 2020 displayed a 242% rise in online sales, topping the list for fastest growing online sales for any company. Another Renew the Blue change came with a heavier focus on North American stores. This also meant divesting a lot of the company's investments in foreign countries and bringing the company out of other nations. It sold 5 Star, taking Best Buy out of China, it sold Carphone Warehouse, which took it out of Europe, and finally last year it closed all of its stores in Mexico. All that are left are the stores in North America and Canada, causing a revenue drop over this last 10 years. That's why Best Buy's revenue chart looks like this. The last part of Renew the Blue came with the transformation of the stores themselves. In addition to the size of the stores being smaller, Best Buy implemented price matching, giving its stores the ability to cut down on showrooming, or when customers view items in store only to buy them cheaper on Amazon at home. With the reduction in costs as mentioned earlier, this allowed Best Buy to price match to be more competitive in the market. Renew Blue officially ended in 2018. Its mission for transforming the company complete. After that, the company again shifted focus to a new growth-centered strategy called Building the New Blue. This new plan essentially doubles down on the improvements made by Renew Blue. With the goal to reach $50 billion and cut an additional $1 billion in costs by 2025. Should Building the New Blue work according to plan, this could spell Best Buy as one of the best performing companies over the next few years. However, there are one or two confusing decisions mixed into Building the New Blue that I have to seriously question. Decisions like selling outdoor equipment at a predominantly electronic store has me scratching my head. The only real idea that comes to mind is to compete with Dick's. Despite this idea, I'm confident that overall Best Buy is headed in a better direction. Now for a word of warning. While Best Buy had an incredible year in 2020, this is not the new normal for the company. Yes, its online sales tripled. Yes, its overall revenue jumped by $7 billion, but I don't think that this can reasonably continue. But if it does, I'll be incredibly surprised. If anything, I believe the company will face a few upcoming problems in the future in regard to revenue. That's why I'm not buying into Best Buy just yet. No, I think I'll wait for a few more earnings calls before I seriously consider investing in the company that I also believe has a lot of promise. From cost cutting to CEO changes and refocusing on both the stores and online sales under the new Renew the Blue plan has led Best Buy into a great turnaround that spells promise for this quote unquote dying old company. Despite physical and economical tornadoes like the rise of Amazon and e-commerce, Best Buy fought back. 
slowly reclaiming a lot of the market stolen by the e-commerce giant. It both innovates and adapts to effectively operate in an Amazon-dominated world, challenging the many assumptions made about Best Buy's future. It bounced back with a promising future ahead, showing us all that it might just be the next Best Buy. If you enjoyed this video on the big blue giant, be sure to leave your opinions in the comments below. Until then, I hope to see all of you in the next episode of Dollars and Cents.